First of all, the game is called 911 Operator. Please don't mix it with 911 because that's the terrorist attacks in America. That's one uh, important lesson to learn uh, while we did this game. What does it work for Americans? So, uh, uh, I'm the chief designer of Jutsu Games, also the main programmer of the, of the project. I'm an operator that was released uh, last year in February. Uh, closer, okay, that's fine, thank you. So, uh, do you know the game? Have you played it? Maybe have you seen it? Anyone? Okay, cool, cool. Who have not seen it yet? Great, so there is a video for you. Uh, as I've heard, this is a animation festival, so we made some animations. We need help. Some cables are hanging down on the field here. Do you know how long it will be? But I want to help. 911, what's your emergency? Help. I've shot my leg off. Do you have something to tie around your leg? No, just, just some tools. Oh, God. All right, take off your shirt, then. What? Take off your shirt and firmly tie it around your leg. Roger that. We need firemen. I can't be going there. God's injured. Going to hospital. Give me the trap for the hospital unit. Oh, God, I finally got through. There's someone over here. We need police assistance. We need more people. Nine one one, what's your emergency? Okay, uh, cool. So uh, that's the game and uh, there's campaigns of three main aspects. So first of all, the task of the player is to manage emergency units like uh, police, firemen and medics throughout the cities. The second part is to answer calls, like real emergency calls that we made a lot of research to, to prepare based on real calls that we could find in some databases or just straight on YouTube and give some first aid instructions like real life first aid instructions you have to decide which treatment is better what to do with a call if you should just uh, send uh, which emergency units or just ignore the call how to prioritize and the third part is that you can actually play on any city in the world uh, like we have like 100 uh, cities and uh, 100,000 cities and more towns, even more towns. So uh, it's actually possible to play in Hill in Jelina. Uh, we've checked that. Uh, so you're welcome. This is how the game looks like uh, inside. Uh, so uh, that's a, a very huge technical aspect that uh, that we had to implement there. And uh, actually, that's the first part of the education by accident, as the title of the presentation said. Uh, so this. Uh, Education by accident, I mean that all these things that people learn while playing the game, even while they didn't really want to learn anything, they are actually forced to learn something. Like in here, just by using the maps, they are actually forced to see how the routes go. This is actually the real routing algorithm that they do. So you can actually check how long does it take for an ambulance to drive from one end of the city to another. It usually takes like five up to ten or fifteen minutes to to go through uh, one end to another. That's a very important lesson to learn um, at once. Okay, and uh, of course we have a speeding option, so you don't have to wait fifteen minutes in in the game time to to do that. And the second part are the calls. Okay, so you actually have to answer the calls, voiceover calls, based on real events. And let's hear to one of them. Nine one one. What's your emergency? Hello. I would like to order a baked pepperoni with extra cheese, please. At two seventeen Main Street. Excuse me. You've reached nine one one. Yes, I know. Oh, and two cans of soda. Ma'am, do you have an emergency? Yes, I do. And you can't talk about it because of someone in the room. Yes, exactly. 
Do you also need medical attention? Is somebody hurt? Yes. Do you know how long it will be? I have an officer about a mile away. I'll, I'll send it right away. Are there any weapons in the house? Yes. Please. Can you stay on the line with me? No. Thanks. I hope we'll get here soon. All right. The officers are coming. Okay, so uh, uh, we actually adapted it to the game and uh, uh, make a story around it. Okay, mm, this is we, we thought that this is one of the best uh, best uh, ideas for the calls. But we have like 70 calls now in the game, all based on some actual statistics and actual some nice stories. So uh, first of all, you have to manage the units. Then you have to give some aids. And let's listen to another one. 911. That's what's your actually in-game now. Help! My kitchen is on fire. What's on fire? Oil in the frying pan. And that's where you have to make the decision. So, do you know what to do with this situation? When you are you there? Pan is on the fire. Any ideas? Help me! The longer you wait, you actually get a penalty for for not replying. So this is actually what happens in-game. So, uh, most of the people use, you, use the If your chip pan catches fire, water. don't panic. This is Just follow these instructions. One, turn off the heat. Two, run a cloth under a tap and wring it out. Three, cover the pan and then wait until it's cooled right down. Don't try and move the pan. And whatever you do, don't throw water over the fire. The effects can be devastating. So this is an advertisement taken from YouTube. Uh, but actually this is something real that you have to learn in your life. You have to know to play the game. And uh, we actually try to teach it, educate people while they play. Actually on every single loading screen, either when you download the map or when you just uh, load your save game, you need to see one of those tip of the days. I'm sure you're pretty familiar with the idea of tip of the days and usually they say something like uh, uh, double tap to make your units go faster or use control to select multiple units. This is something that we, have, we, we didn't do by purpose. We actually wanted to have tips of the day that based on uh, first aids. So uh, this is one of them that actually educates uh, in the meantime, what to do with every special case. And this basically explains you not to throw the water on, just to cover the, uh, the jar, the pot, in with, with a damp towel. Uh, we have pretty, uh, quite a few of them. So um, mm, let me go through those, because uh, it's not only about the first aid. Uh, well, the, mo the most important thing that you need to learn, and that's actually the school doesn't do, is to teach how to call 911, or here in Europe, 112, let's call it just an emergency number. Did any one of you ever called uh, 112, an emergency number? Okay, three of you. I hope that you won't ever have to do it again, or you won't have to ever do it in your life. But actually, that's a very important lesson. It, a life will depend on it. So um, there are a couple of rules that you have to learn either both playing as a dispatcher or need to know as a citizen and how to call an emergency number. Uh, first of all, the operator will want to know just the facts. He will want to know, and that will be the most important for him, where you are, an exact address, an exact street number, an exact kilometer of a highway, so he can actually organize help. And this is called the uh, 4W rule in English, like where, what, when, and when is quite important because sometimes people uh, call with past events, like this happened yesterday and they want help now. And this is not an emergency call then. And who is involved? How many people is, are involved? If there was a car crash, if there is just one people injured or a couple of people injured, maybe two cars, more cars. And more popular in America than in Europe, are there any weapons? Okay. This is an important case, cultural one also. 
Uh, one of the legend is uh, that people are afraid to call emergency number. This is also a case in our game that we wanted to reproduce. And please don't worry, that's the first lesson, education by accident on Fest Anka. Please don't worry to call an emergency number ever. Okay, that's the operator decision uh, to, uh, to decide if it's an important case or not. Please don't worry, they will ignore you if, if it doesn't sound urgent. Okay. Then we have uh, many more of those, what to do with uh, uh, some special cases, bleeding, uh, heart attack, uh, how to uh, help with a heart attack, how to recognize a heart attack, how to recognize a stroke, that's pretty interesting, just half of the face is unresponsive. Uh, how to t survive a tornado or earthquake, uh, what to do with a seizure, an epilepsy attack. Uh, don't, don't put anything in, uh, in between teeth of the person that gets a seizure. Uh, what to do with choking, what to do with fainting, uh, CP how to do CPR, that's actually like very important lesson that's most countries you have to learn it while you do your driving license or just how to keep compressing and do some briefs if necessary. Uh, then how to plan a rescue action while you still wait for emergency uh, uh, the first responders to arrive. Then what to do with poisoning, what to do with car accident. Oh, please, pl put those triangles, those really help. This is also one, one case of my life that uh, uh, this really can save a life when you put this triangle, not run around your car on a highway. Uh, what to do with uh, panic in a crowd, uh, what to do when you get a burn, what to do with uh, electrical shocks, burning house, hypothermia, even venomous snakes that are maybe not the case in Slovakia, but are a huge case in Australia and America. So we had like 30 of those. This took quite, quite a long time to prepare them and uh, uh, draw and translate. We have uh, like 10, uh, 10 uh, translations now, or even more amateur ones made by fans. And this is actually a nice first aid book that's included in the game. And it's still not the base uh, and core functionality. Um, yeah, But the main job of the 911 operator is actually not only to know those first aid instructions. Uh, first of all, he needs to make a decision what to do when the call arrives. Actually, the statistics, sad statistics now, and another indication for, from me to you, is that 50% uh, of the calls are called uh, butt calls. That uh, phone can make a call on its own because even with a locked screen you can still make an emergency call. You don't even need to know the PIN code or the security uh, system. So uh, half of the calls that are made to uh, emergency call are just made automatically and the operator doesn't hear a thing. Or uh, people give their phones to children and children try to tap it and they call emergency number again by accident and the operator doesn't know what's going on if the, uh, the child was left unattended and he tries to reach for help or if it is just a prank call. So like, like three quarters of all the calls that emergency number um, operators get are ignorable. Just the other 25% are the calls that actually need a response. And out of those, maybe 10% actually needed a response. Mm, so let me show you some more calls that we included in the games out of the 17. 911, what's your emergency? Oh my god! Oh my god! Sir, what, what's happening there? I, my daughter! My daughter! What happened to your daughter, sir? Okay, sir, we're going to get ambulance on the way. Have you checked her pulse? Yes. yes. There's no pulse. She doesn't have a heartbeat. Her heart stopped. Is her body completely cold? <laughs> My baby. Do you know what happened to her? Uh, 
What's the address you're calling from? I'll send a patrol there. Please stay where you are and try not to move or touch anything. So sorry about that. Actually, it always gives me chills when I listen to that. That was not a real call. That was an uh, an actor that uh, uh, made just the voice acting for uh, for a call that we prepared. But actually, it's a real story, of course. Uh, and uh, this is something that operators have to be prepared all the time. It's not only about the decision to make. It's also about the psychological effect that the calls make. People are going to be very nervous. They're going to be desperate. Sometimes a suicider calls. How to deal with a suicider, a person that just wants to jump. Usually happens so that many of them call somebody, in, uh, a helpline, a friend, or an emergency number. and. Uh, they look for help. This is something what you have to deal with uh, in the game too. Uh, but not all the calls are so serious. Some of times are more strange. Uh, you have to adapt to every possible situation that that can happen. So uh, let's go for another one. Nine one one. What's your emergency? Hi. Uh, hello. I I don't have an emergency, but I'm making a computer game about your work, and uh, I'd like to possibly talk for a moment. Sir, do you, ha do you have an emergency? Uh, no, I don't, but, but can we speak, possibly? Well, we can talk for a moment. Okay, but maybe we shall meet after your work, so I don't blog the line? No, no, it's fine now. Okay, okay, then tell me, please, what's most challenging about your work? Hmm, well, there are just so many reports and teams, it's, uh, it's really hard to handle. Uh, then what is most satisfying or entertaining about it? Helping people, saving lives. Okay, uh, I would like to ask a couple of technical questions, but maybe you, I should send you an email with those so you can reply in text uh, in your free time? Sure, sure, however you prefer it. Send them to... Com. Okay, thank you so much. I'll write right away. You're welcome. So this is actually more of an Easter egg in a game that this was actually me calling uh, the operator and uh, actually making some plot twist in a game that, uh, that the people play. But this is actually a real call that I made. So I'm actually not very proud of it, but why not? As I told you before, you can actually call an emergency number with anything you like and the operator will decide what happened. The real story was that uh, they always, uh, of course, told me uh, Please don't block the line and uh, please write an email or so and uh, try to get a re response that I never get. But uh, the, the actual the voice actor that plays the operator is an actual emergency line operator that used to work in this job for a couple of years. We managed to find him and I'm so happy that we found him because he had so much knowledge about uh, the, the subject of the game. And he agreed it to be our both voice actor for the operator and a meritorical consultant for the game. So the Ian that, that you hear when speaking as the operator, he really did this job. He gave us quite a few ideas for the game also. And uh, he still works with us and still consults the game. Yeah, so let's go for another one. 911, what's your emergency? Hello? Oh yeah, hi. I have a problem. I ordered a pizza and it's, it's, it's too damn spicy. Excuse me? My pizza. It, it's extremely spicy. I can barely manage to eat a slice. Are you in danger but can't talk about it because there's someone in the room? What? No, no I just want to get my money back. Is this a joke? Yo, do I sound like I'm joking? Pizza is never a joke. Sir, you're tying up a 911 emergency line with a non-emergency call. Think how you would feel if it was your pizza. Uh, 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 I'm disappointed, dude. May your pizza never be too spicy. So this is more like a joke uh, call, of course, that we also include in the game, like maybe five of them. And this is another part of the job, actually far bigger than uh, I said, like five of the calls in the game are, are joke calls. 
as I said before, more than half of the calls are actually ignorable. So uh, this is also what you have to deal with as being an operator, and uh, please don't do it in your real life, and don't call <laughs> an emergency number when you get stoned. Uh, yeah. But now, uh, apart from the jokes, we get some very serious subjects now. Uh, some uh, things that, that people talk about or don't talk about as it's an, a taboo question. So uh, recently we also made a, uh, made a story uh, that we wanted to make a video for and uh, also publish it that is not actually included in the game. So please take a look. <laughs> What's your emergency? I'm hurt. Where are you calling from? I'm at home. You said you're hurt. <sighs> How were you injured? It was supposed to be a date. I didn't know. <laughs> what kind of injuries do you have? He beat me and... And there's... There's blood. Is he still there with you? Miss, were you sexually assaulted? Sorry, this is actually a very sad story that, that uh, we also were very afraid to speak about. But uh, making the game, actually that was quite unavoidable to, to touch the subject, as, as it's also one of the most important calls, uh, most difficult calls uh, that the operator had to deal with. Also, another sad statistic is that out of 35% of the women that have experienced some sexual violence, less than half report that and this is also an education by accident that uh, i hope to pass not to be afraid to call the guys at the other side or also the ladies more often the ladies are there to help uh, attention all oh maybe just give me a, a word about this so this is what does that was one of the most uh, difficult cases that the operator had to deal with another more difficult case actually the most expensive uh, part of the uh, operator and emergency calls that can happen are the missing people uh, when there is an accident there is just one ambulance going to the place maybe one or two police officers going to the place but when there is somebody missing like a little child missing actually they're gonna use quite a few units like um, 10 units uh, firemen medics uh, helicopter that's uh, really expensive so please don't lose your child attention all units we've got a child missing in the area of the national park unit l8 we are on it unit gr8 we are on it Sector clear. We move on to the next one. Base to K9. Move to Sector Delta 7. 113 Operator. We found him. He's alive. Well done, people. Well done. So uh, that's the newest DLC that comes next month. Uh, and that's, that's the video that, that, uh, that promotes it. The, the new functionality is that you can actually search for people in the sectors and you can, we will all actually have to engage uh, quite a few units to find those either missing child, escaping prisoner, uh, some, um, just some criminals or elderly people that are also uh, sometimes found missing. Uh, so, uh, so far, the game reached like half a million people with the sold copies. Uh, that's 
far bigger success than we expected when we started to make this game. Like, apparently 3 million pirated copies and uh, the, the game is uh, actually now well acclaimed. And I really hope that we manage to educate somebody and actually save some lives. That was always my dream, to make something uh, serious, make something uh, that helps, that uh, builds the community. Uh, I end up be making computer games that I'm really happy of, but uh, I also hope that we can actually uh, improve the world that, that we live in. So out of those people that played the game, we actually received just, just one direct message for our Facebook uh, page with uh, one guy that said that he saved his kitchen because he learned instruction in the game. So this is actually a real uh, copy of... Um, of a message that we received. Uh, I'm so happy to save at least one uh, kitchen. I hope that we also save at least one life. That would be the best uh, price that I can get uh, for making this game. Uh, so the same as, as the person says, uh, thank you for coming and hope that you learned something valuable today. Okay. That's it, thank you. By the way, the, the games operator's uh, uh, fan page that, that, that we posted now is actually our own publishing account too now. So as the previous presentation was about publishing, we also do publishing now. So if you, if you are a game developer, please come and tell us what, you want, what games do you want to do, we can help. Okay. Uh, I'm Any sure questions? That's I'm sure you have some questions, so if so, just raise your hands and then I will come with Mike. Anyone? Hello, a nice presentation. I would like Thank to you. ask you uh, what's the story behind creating of the game, um, uh, how you started? That's, that's actually a very long story. Uh, okay, let's go with the whole of it. Why not? So the, the everything started, uh, well, quite a few years ago, like 10 years ago, that uh, I worked with map systems. Uh, I also work with, uh, with police systems, actually employed by the police in Poland to make their uh, web system for reporting the crimes and statistics. And that was a story like 10 years ago. Then quite a few years ago, I applied personally for a company that make computer games, and they may ask me if to make a, uh, a game design based on one of the movies that, that were in the, uh, in the cinema at the time. One of them was uh, Judge Dredd, so I watched it, and I decided that it's a nice story for a game, so um, I wrote it down uh, to, to make a, a, a game about dispatching units throughout the cities, because I knew the police, how the police works, I knew how the maps work, so why not? Actually, I was an employee there. Quite a few years later, I, g uh, I had a meeting with one of the publishing companies, and they asked me what kind of games ideas do I have. So I showed them one game that I did, another game that I showed, they were not interested, the third game that I made, and they were still not interested. And they asked me, do I have anything more? So I said, I have just piece of pieces of paper that lay in my closet. Okay, show those, pa show those papers. And actually the game design was like four pages long. Uh, the game was called Call the Police at that time, but it evolved later on. They, they said that we wanted this game to, uh, to make, so let's do it. Okay, later on I, I just uh, noticed when I made the prototype that Playing with just the police is not enough. Actually, it's more about managing uh, different units, medics, firemen, and police, how to organize them, that they sometimes overlap with their responsibilities. A police guy usually can also help you with, with a medical case, and vice versa. Uh, well, maybe an ambulance guys won't take a criminal to prison, but uh, they can also do some base uh, engineering stuff when there is a car accident as well as the firemen can. And uh, later on we noticed that this game is a bit flat, so we included the calls in the game. While making the research for the game itself, uh, we uh, decided that there, there are so many resources, so many calls available, there are thousands of them. We just had our 300 of our own ideas for calls that we wanted to make. 
and this is how it goes. So uh, the game concept constantly evolved until we reached something that was uh, we decided very good, both for the publishing and uh, mm, for the publishing. Okay. Anyone else? Well, we still have s a few more minutes, so no one? Anyway, you're welcome to come later and then ask your personal questions or talk about the, uh, uh, the game development or game publishing. Okay, uh, if you'd like to try 901 operator, feel free to check the game uh, up there at the, bal in the, at the balcony. And uh, that's all. Thank you for your talk. Thank you.